And I believe so many people have just been taught that, like, if I can just sell, 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 and as long as my bank account is going up and not down, I'll be okay. That's stressed to the max because they don't know what is their money. They don't know where it is, where it's going. And both sets of people, usually at the end of the month, don't have any money, and they're wondering what the heck happened to it. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My special guest today on Raising Private Money is not only a good friend, we're also fellow mastermind members. Well, he's been a real estate investor for quite a few years. And, you know, quite frankly, he's been essential in closing over 850 real estate deals. Well, he's got experience in all kinds of deals. Uh, he's got experience in wholesaling, turnkey, uh, the Burr method, owner financing, rentals, lease options. Uh, to tell you the truth, just about any other kind of real estate investing strategy or exit strategy that you can think of. Well, while he was growing and building his real estate business uh, to actually over 25 deals a month, he realized that there was just as much money going out the back door as there was coming in the front door every month. Well, he found a calling while sitting in the company's finance seat to help businesses see where their money was actually really going. I mean, at the end of a month, why was there so often more months left over than there was money? Well, he's helped real estate companies completely turn around from going out of business to actually building cash reserves by using what he calls the profit first cash flow system. Well, he's been featured on Bigger Pockets, Real Estate Disruptors with Steve Trang, another great friend of ours, and many other podcast shows and stages. And to help even more people, he is the author of the best-selling book, Profit First for Real Estate Investing which really is a derivative of the original Profit First book. But this one is specifically for you as a real estate investor. Well, my friend and my guest goal is to completely transform the real estate investing industry by helping real estate investors just like you make and keep, there's the magic word, more money in your business. He's the founder. He's the owner of Simple CFO Solutions. And he wants to bring investors like you true financial clarity and freedom and to help you stop living deal to deal. In just a moment, you're going to meet my good friend, fellow mastermind member, Mr. David Richter, right after this. Well, welcome to Raising Private Money, David. Jay, it's awesome to be back. Thanks for having me. Well, it's just awesome to have you back. Now, the last time I had you here on the show, you were actually in the process of launching your new book. It wasn't quite out the door yet. But since that time, my lands, you're like, I could barely get you scheduled to get here on the show from your book being so popular and boring. So tell us about your book. Tell everybody about the name of your book and What's been going on with the book since it came out? Yeah, so name of the book is Profit First for Real Estate Investing. And it's been a whirlwind for sure because a lot of people have heard of the Profit First system in the small business world. And if you haven't, it's a cash flow management system. And you say, what does that mean? It means very simply, it helps you know where your money's going. It gives every dollar a name and it helps you know exactly what's going on. There it is, the Profit First for Real Estate. It's a real book. Look, there it is, right there on Amazon. And if you do stay till the end, I will give it to you. You can either buy it on Amazon, or I'll give you a copy. Like, I want to give you a copy because literally, I have seen so many people. I've been doing this enough, like Jay was saying. It was a little bit hard to get scheduled. I do a lot of this, podcast, speaking, virtual, in person. And I've had people, I've been doing this long enough now, where they've come back. And I've been on a second round and people have said, I just did one thing 
from that book or one thing from you speaking and I have more money in my account now. And I'm like, that's what I want. I want you to take action and I want you to get something real. So I'm excited about this episode. I'm excited about being here, Jay. Honestly, talking about, I would love to focus on the private money side too, because that's one of the things that most people comment to me after the launch of the book, because I have a specific account in the Profit First system and we can go over that, that deals with the money and the lending and that part of it and just makes your life a whole lot simpler. So it's been a whirlwind, but I'm glad to be back. I am so glad to have you back. And I definitely want us to talk about uh, private money and how your system, you know, keeps up with that, you know, in the accounting of it. Uh, But so first, uh, one more time, I want us to bring the book. I want us to bring the book back up here before we leave the book for for this moment. So, um, Sharif, if you can put that book right back up real quick, I want to give everybody the exact title of this book on profiting first. Uh, you know, as David said, you can get it on Amazon. He's going to give it to you for free here at the end of the show. It's called Profit First for Real Estate Investing. And so, my first question, David, is. Why is it? Yeah, there's the full there's the full title. Profit first for real estate investing. Transform your real estate investing business from a cash eating monster to a money making machine. So, David, here's here's my first question. Why is it? And of course, you must have seen this time and time and time again. You must have seen this as a trend to actually write the book. Why is it that you saw and you see so many real estate investors that are making, you know, big profits on deals. But when the end of the month gets here, the money's gone. Why is that a common problem with investors? Oh, man, it's a loaded question. But I know because <laughs> there's so many reasons, but I'm going to boil it down to one simple thing. One simple thing that I believe that a lot of people, in the, if you're an entrepreneur, this is probably something that you've heard before, this statement, income solves all problems. That's, I believe, the root problem of why people don't have money at the end of the month. Because I, even though I will be even controversial with myself, I believe that's a true statement, that income solves all problems, but there has to be a second part. If you have a system to catch the income that comes in that you can keep it. And I believe so many people have just been taught that like, if I can just sell, 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 and as long as my bank account is going up and not down, I'll be okay. That's how most people operate their business. I don't care. I've seen people doing a couple hundred thousand to several million operating like that. But both of those people, no matter what it is that at a couple hundred thousand or a couple million are stressed to the max because they don't know what is their money. They don't know where it is, where it's going. And both sets of people usually at the end of the month don't have any money. And they're wondering what the heck happened to it. It's because the root problem that we think income solves all problems where you need income. It it doesn't matter if you don't have income because then there's nothing to keep. So you need income coming in. But have you ever, I want you to think, have you ever in your life doubled the money that's coming into you? Whether that's like you got a better paying job, whether that's like, hey, we went from one deal a month to two deals a month, or we did 10 deals this year, we did 20 deals the next year, whatever it might be. Have you ever done that or had a significant increase in the revenue that you've brought in? If you've ever done that, has that ever equated to more actual money in your pocket? For a lot of people, I'd say close to 90%. Most people would say no. It's because we think that income solves all problems, but we have to have a system behind it in order to catch the money. So that's why I believe a lot of people struggle. There's not a lot of money at the end of the month. Why people live deal to deal. They're stuck in their own real estate rat race. It's just like one more deal and we'll be okay. But then even if they add a zero to their bottom, you know, to their top line, that does not translate to their bottom line. I've seen like the hundred thousand dollar investor scale to a million dollars and now they've just added a zero to their problems. So that's why this book. That's why this message, that's why trying to get this out there because yes, I want you to make money, but I also, at the end of the day, want you to keep it and do what you were born to do for your business. I've heard people say, you know, you just can't go broke making a profit, but I would argue with that statement. (laughs) Uh, You can't go broke making a profit. Well, let me challenge that statement. And then you chime in, David, because you're the expert on this. 
Um, I'd say you can go broke making a profit if your money runs out before you realize the profit. Oh, man, that is so good. Oh, there's a story. Let me tell a quick story around that exact situation. I was literally on the phone with a guy a couple months ago, and he had 21 deals in the pipeline. Like about, I think, 15 of them like would have brought in $4 million. Like, and he was sitting on those to close. They were actually in process through the closing process, but he had four projects he was in the middle of that was absolutely draining his cash, the cash he had in his business. And literally on that phone call, he said, I'm thinking about declaring bankruptcy. He had several million in profit in the pipeline, but was so stressed out didn't love what he was doing. Was the, All the money was being siphoned off. He was using a lot of his own money to do it. He was so stressed to the max. He was thinking about throwing it, uh, the towel in, not doing real estate investing anymore. And he was literally sitting on a multi seven-figure payday. That's where I, I 100% agree with your statement there. And I've seen enough of these situations just like that, where you could be in the middle of making a lot of money, but you're, if your money runs out before then, what are you going to do? How are you going to get to the end goal? So that's where it's like we're trying to get people to stay as far away from that and enjoy their business along the way too. <clears throat> so now that we've identified the problem and we've exacerbated the pain because yeah. I know we've got listeners here that are going, boy, can I relate to that? Boy, can I relate to that? You know, yeah. I'm just one deal away from <laughs> ecstasy. One yes. deal away from ecstasy and pleasure. So since we've identified something that most of us can relate to, um, yes, we need to get the book. We need to read your book. But in the short time we have here on the show, give us the, give us the 30,000 foot view. How do you fix the problem? So here's the synopsis. I'll give you that 30,000 foot view. Most people, if you're listening to this podcast, have probably read Rich Dad, Poor Dad sometime in your life. You probably read that book or you've heard about it, Robert Kiyosaki. If you haven't, you've probably read Richest Man in Babylon, oh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. All these books touch on a core concept of, like Rich Dad Poor Dad says, pay yourself first. Richest Man in Babylon, a portion of all I have is mine to keep. The Seven Habits book says, put first things first. So we've heard this core message that if you get into business, make sure you pay yourself and you're healthy. Like that's the message they're getting across. Like if you're running a for-profit business, the profit should come first. And then you use the profit for what you want to do. But that's where a lot of the messages stopped from those books. That's why me as an entrepreneur, I know I look like the numbers guy. I get it. But that's where I sat down and read Profit First. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it says, it tells you Profit First, the same messaging. Pay yourself first. A portion of all you have is yours to keep. It's the same concept. But then there was actual steps behind it to be able to say, how do I keep more of what I'm making? And that's where the 30,000 foot view is, you probably heard of this too, the envelope method. The envelope method that Dave Ramsey's made very popular or like a lot of the personal finance gurus out there have told about because it's literally telling every dollar where to go in your personal life by sticking the money in envelopes and saying, once it runs out, we're out. That's what the profit first system, the actual system behind pay yourself first is built on the envelope method. And whether you love or hate the personal finance gurus, there's actual core principles of finance to learn. And one of them is being intentional with every dollar that comes through your fingers and knowing where to put it and where in exactly how much you're keeping, making and spending. Like uh, those are the three numbers. If you know those numbers, how much you make, spend and keep, you'll be light years ahead of other investors. So this system teaches you certain accounts to set up physical bank accounts because I don't want you setting up envelopes. Even though the envelope method is the core system, it's still using bank accounts because you're not going to stuff envelopes with tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, like I don't want you doing that. So you open up physical business bank checking accounts and you say, here are the accounts that are for specific reasons. I'm going to give you the five fundamental accounts. That And then there's an extra one that I'm going to give as a bonus that you should have as a real estate investor specifically. Here's the five fundamental accounts at a high level. Number one, two, and three, I call the golden trio. Just like you've got the big epic sagas, Harry Potter, Star Wars, they have the three main heroes, right? Luke, Han, Leia, Harry, Ron, Hermione. You need three heroes in your business because your business is your epic saga. So the first three accounts I open up called the golden trio is profit, owner's comp, and owner's tax. 
So those three help you keep more profit. You take quarterly and it's the icing on the cake. It's why you started your business. The owner's cop is how much do I need to get paid on a monthly basis so I don't feel I'm in survival mode all the time and start stuffing that bank account with enough money to pay yourself consistently. The owner's taxes, if you're going to pay taxes at the end of the year, you've at least got the taxes in there to say, hey, here, Mr. CPA or Miss CPA, like I just want, don't want to think about the money for taxes again. And you put oh, every portion of every deal, a small portion goes towards that tax account. The other two are very simple income, where it's just a separate account, separate bank account where all the money comes in. So that way it's sitting there and then you tell it to go to the golden trio first, a portion of that money. And then the rest of the profit from the deal goes towards OPEX, which is the fifth one. You already have that set up, operational expenses. That one's the bad guy of the business. That's where you're spending all your money. That's the one that most people just have that one account set up. I do want to say the sixth one has a lot to do with this show. OPM, other people's money. If you're going to take money from someone else for your business or for projects or rehabs or whatever, then you get that money in and I don't want you mingling it with the other accounts. So those are the five fundamental accounts and the six bonus one for real estate investing. But I tell people this, if we're going back to the 30,000 foot view, can you at least set up one account from this presentation and from this podcast and from this video, because if you do that, set up one account and transfer 1% of all your deals going forward, you're at least starting the habit of keeping more, which is something that a lot of people lack, just that being able to not spend everything they make and actually have money at the end of the day. This is the first step to a much happier you of actually having the money you want to be able to do the things you want. So at a high level, it's first the mindset of pay yourself first, like you've heard everywhere. Then I just gave you the 30,000 foot view of the system, which the book dives a lot more into it of like where to set these up, how to set these up, how often do you transfer the money? What are the percentages into there? And that's too much for today, but that's at least the 30,000 foot view with some practical steps. And if you do that one thing, that's where I've literally had people come back to me and said, I've set up at least one account and we've scaled to like 15% that we just put away from every deal. And that just makes us feel better because we're not spending spending everything we're making. I mean, start where you can. That's the that's the overview of the system. Now, I want to drill down on that uh, yeah, advice sure. that you just gave, David. So you said, if you just do one thing, set up one account, and you said, and you just put just 1% of what? 1% of the deal of profit. What? Like if you get the deal profit in and it comes into your accounts, like you get it wired from the title company or from the closing attorney or wherever that the money's coming from, you get a check. <laughs> deposit that account, deposit that money, and then have a separate account. Call it profit. Open up a profit account and just transfer from that money that's deposited, just transfer 1%. The goal is to start the habit as soon as possible of like everything that comes in, a little portion of it is going towards the actual cash profitability of our business. So that's where I'm like, just start where you can. If all those accounts seem too overwhelming, start with one and transfer 1% of the income that comes into your business. And what do I get to do with that money? Oh, with that one, first of all, there's a couple things. Number one, it helps you grow. It helps you grow your confidence in yourself. Number one of like, I don't spend everything I make and I can do this. So even if you start small, that's where it's like, it's helping you build that habit and self-confidence. Number two, it's a great psychological factor too, of like, I have money set aside that isn't for just running the business and I could do what I want with it basically. Because if you start small, it's not going to be in 1%. It might not grow significantly right then. But then if you start adding percentages, then if you get on the full profit first system and actually have multiple accounts and you're doing greater percentages than 1%, that can start to grow rapidly. And the profit account is specifically there for you to realize why you started your business. Why did you start your business? A lot of people say financial freedom. What does that mean to you? Does that mean more trips or a car? Or does that mean just time freedom or like whatever that a paid off portfolio that just brings in passive income, like whatever that means for you? That's what that profit account is supposed to be there for, where you take up to 50% out of it from every single quarter and you see how much you've built up in there and you get all excited because at the end of the quarter, you see, oh man, we've done X amount of dollars and we put it inside of this account and then you get to take up to 50% and honestly, use it for whatever the heck you want. I don't care if it's paying down good debt on a portfolio or if it's going out and buying that boat you've always wanted or it's going on a trip. Like one of the first things, one of the first clients I ever had and worked with, 
he did a three-day trip with his family from the first profit draw. It was just a little weekend trip. But they, he said, that was the best trip I've ever taken because I took it from this one account and it wasn't touching my operations and I didn't feel guilty about taking the money out. That same client is still with us. And he, last year, he took three weeks off with his family because by June, he had filled up all his accounts where he didn't need to do another deal the rest of the year. So July through December, he didn't have to do another deal and he would have been okay. But that's because of the system and being able to know like where his money was and how much he needed to operate his business. So it went from three days to three weeks. And what about you? Can you start somewhere like that where it's like, hey, can I at least get a three-day weekend or an ice cream cone or something that I could just start with that I could buy with a profit so I can feel like, hey, this is worth it. I want to keep reinvesting into this system and like I want to invest into the profit account and I want to make sure that this business is really providing what I set out to do when I first started the real estate investing journey. It sounds to me like, David, uh, setting up this new account, this one account, your profit first account could really have a positive psychological effect on the entrepreneur to where you actually, in a guilt-free format uh, or in a guilt-free way, actually celebrate your success along the way. Yes. There are so many entrepreneurs who go out there and kick their own butt. They go, they do the 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hour weeks. They go out there, they sacrifice, they do everything possible to make their business successful. And then they never stop to celebrate that success or say, here's the fruits of my labor. And honestly, a lot of them, it's just because of a lack of a system that they don't have there. And a lot of us just beat ourselves up a lot. We always think because there's always another goal, we always push ourselves. So we never stop to smell the roses. We never stop to say, hey, we just achieved that goal. That was awesome. And look, we're going to take the profit and celebrate and do something fun with it. Like that's what I want for the entrepreneur community is to be able to say, I have a successful business. I have a system to tell every dollar where to go and I get to celebrate with it. So that way I don't feel like I'm just running and gunning. And even though I've been successful on the way, I've never felt it. So I have a guess. I yeah. don't know. I don't know, but I have a guess as to the percentage of the clients of entrepreneurs, real estate investors that you have worked with, you've been exposed to how their brain works, you've been exposed to their financial statements, you've been exposed to the kind of real estate deals they do, the amount of deals they do. And here's my question What percentage of those people that you start to work with pay themselves last? instead of first. What okay, before I do that and tell you that answer, I want to ask you, what do you think that percentage is? 90%. Jay, you, okay, well good. And we're on the same wavelength because I would say it is close to 90%. I, it's a running joke with a lot of the clients we work with or people that I see out and about when I go out and speak and stuff that they say that the books really should be called profit last. Cause that's where we all take our profit. And I'm like, I need to do a parody book. I think that would sell a lot of copies just because a lot of people would identify with taking their profit last because most people do before pre-profit first, two things happen. You either starve yourself or starve your business. And most people don't, in, don't fall into the star of their business as much. That one's more like, Hey, I just did my first deal ever. And I went out and bought the Lamborghini and Oh shoot. I'm not, I haven't done a deal for a couple months and now it got repossessed. You know, it's like you're not starving your business. Most people aren't doing that. If you are doing that, that's a different problem and it's still workable. The other one is starving yourself. And if you're starving yourself, you're not serving anyone. You know why? Because you're in survival mode. And when you make decisions out of fear, you don't make decisions from your purpose and you won't build the business you really want to build. And so many people do. I would say it's upwards of 90 to 95% when we start working with them, do not pay themselves either consistently or enough. Some people will start to pay themselves, but it's like random draws here and there. It's still stressful. They still put us, they're still commingling personal and business. It's like they are playing the money shuffle game left and right. So that's where it's like, we have to get into this where the business is actually a real business. You actually know the numbers that's going on and you have the profit to support this business as well too. 
So I have a two part question now that yeah. we've identified now that we've identified that most real estate entrepreneurs um, have the mindset of whatever's left over is for me. Business first, whatever's left over is for me. So they have that mindset. So my two part question with that being the case is, first of all, do you ever run into working with a new client and the new client has got this fear of, well, David, I'm afraid if I pay myself first, I may not have enough left over to take care of my business first so that I can even take care of myself at all. And I see you shaking your head. Yes. If that's the case, how do you, how do they fix that? Yeah. So first of all, when I say pay yourself first and when everyone says pay yourself first, like all these different things, that does not mean that you're also killing the business at the same time. That might mean like right now, like if I did an analysis on a business that was in front of me that we haven't worked with and I said, show me the numbers. Like, first of all, they probably couldn't show the numbers because it's probably not clear there, but that's a different story. But secondly, okay, how much are you paying yourself? Okay, it's random draws or whatever, or maybe nothing at this point. Oh, you're scared to take draws? Well, let's see. How are we going to get out of that? Number one, where can what can we do right now without tanking the business? So I don't want you to take the business. That's why I even said set up one account and transfer 1%. That won't usually tank someone's business to be able to actually start there that small and then grow from there. So what I want to say, first of all, is if that's where you are scared, we are trying to build a habit. If you've been in the business for any length of time, you didn't get into the position over a month. It was probably years worth or multiple months of like being the business owner that you were pre listening to something like this, you know, about paying yourself first and being responsible as a business owner. So how would you pay yourself? Number one, I would say start with what you can. If it's only 1% to owner's cop, okay. Well, then next month or next quarter, can it go to 2 or 5% or can we raise it? And then how quickly can we get you to what you need to be paid on a monthly basis? That's the first number. That's where I tell people that it's not about getting you there like this instant. It's about setting a goal of like a North Star. Okay, here we go. This is what we're going after first. We have to at least get the owner out of survival mode. Because if the owner's in survival mode, that's going to also tank the business too. Think about it. If the owner goes down, the whole ship goes down. So it's like balancing that up front of, okay, how much can we get them? What other sources of income do they have coming in? And really taking a snapshot of their life to be like, okay, how quickly can we get this up and running from the business? And how many months do they have of their own reserves or whatever they have in place to be able to give themselves that time? And if they don't have any time, then we're helping them say, okay, what's the most we can put into marketing or right now to be able to dump money in so we have money to manage that can help you and breathe, but now you're going to have a system to catch it. So it's like those are some of the tiers that we go with people. But the first thing is start with where you can. You might not be able to cover exactly what you need, but at least you're in the right habit and then you're aggressively attacking what you need to keep from the business on a monthly basis as that number you're posting right in front of you all the time. David, your book, Profit First for Real Estate Investing is an amazing book. Congratulations on the abundant success of this book so far. Now, you promised at the beginning of the show that you were going to give this book away. You even have an audio version that you can give away as well. So how do our listeners and uh, viewers here get the yeah. book? So if you want the full book, it's simplecfo.com forward slash freebies. It's right there, F-R-E-E-B-I-E-S. So simplecfo.com forward slash freebies. What it actually gives you is the profit first cheat sheet that says, here's the first couple steps to take. No matter where you are in your journey, a thousand deals in or one deal in, like this will help you at least be profitable from the next deal. But then one of the links in that cheat sheet is the link to my book. So if you're like, you want, because <laughs> come on, let's be honest. What are you going to look at as the entrepreneur? Are you going to dive in and read the 200 page book in one sitting? Probably not. So I have the cheat sheet there so you can get up and running. And then you have the book there as well, too. If you have questions as you go along that explain more in depth, the one page cheat sheet that's on that, that page there. So to get your fast track to paying yourself first, go to www.simplecfo.com forward slash freebies. That's all spelled out. Simple, 
S-I-M-P-L-E, CFO, CFO.com, simple, CFO.com forward slash free bees, F-R-E-E-B-I-E-S. That'll get you the cheat sheet, also get you the uh, link to the, the to the book at all. And uh, take a moment, David, um, give us the 30,000 foot view. How do you actually work with your clients? Oh, sure. So we have a fra- I own a fractional CFO company, which is just a fancy term for part-time and part cost too, because it is not the full-time cost of a full-time CFO. The full cost of a full-time CFO is about $200,000, $250,000 a year. We're nowhere near that. What we do is we come in and we literally put a financial leader on your team, a chief financial officer that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and doesn't take a ton of your time, but it comes in and we do three things up front. We call it laying the financial foundation making sure you know your numbers, that you have a good bookkeeping system process in person, and we manage the bookkeeper and the CPA. So that way you don't have to have all those ticky-tack conversations anymore. We're trying to get you as far away from the decimal point as possible. Number two, we implement profit first. So everything you get on the cheat sheet there or everything you read in the book, like we dive in and customize it for your business. And then number three, we set up a dashboard. We call it the Simple CFO Dashboard that we have high-level conversations with the owner literally saying, what are you making, spending, and keeping? When we do the cash flow forecasting and all the different things that we do in your cash positions, at the end of the day, we're doing it from the framework of are you making enough? Are you spending it in the right places to get what you want? And then are you keeping any of it to make sure that it's actually worth it for you? And that's where the CFO is that financial leader on your team to direct and guide the financial side so you, at the end of the day, keep more money. David, thank you so much for offering up uh, your fast track uh, fast track cheat sheet on someone implementing um, the profit first strategies. And I can't wait to see you at the upcoming uh, mastermind meeting, David. It's always a pleasure to see you. Oh, likewise. And thanks for having me again, Jay. And it's always a pleasure talking with you. And it's I'm really looking forward to in a couple of weeks as well. You got it. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And if you found this episode motivating, inspiring, inspirational, and informative, if you are listening on iTunes or Spotify, be sure and follow so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming amazing episodes. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and ring that bell so you don't miss out as well. If you're on LinkedIn, shoot me a private message. I'd love to connect with you personally on LinkedIn. So here's to taking your business to the next level. Looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Common. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.